like it because he once a month. Yeah, once a month I speak to him. I don't think he's listening because he asked me all the same questions last time. And I said, well, maybe you know he's having a bad day. He forgot, but in my head I started thinking that again. Then the third time, you know, same questions every time. I said, he's making sure the answers don't change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so if they seem cold, maybe trying to figure out why. Or yeah. if they seem too indulgent, you know, trying to figure out why. Yeah, everybody has, you know, doctors. Like, and they have to click. They have a different approach. So it really is, it's about finding that right person for you. And it, it, it can be difficult, but it's mm -hmm. definitely worth it. Because, you know, you only get one life. And you want to live it for yourself to the fullest. That you can be happy and the people around you can be happy. I, I definitely see improvement even with in my relationship with my mom, mama, her mom, you know, since I've started working on myself, I'm like better to get along with other people because I would be like lashing out and taking everything personal. Like, oh, you're mad at me. No, I just came home from work and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. And it can be hard. And like I said, I'm, you know, we're always here. We can email, we can text. We'll do, we'll start with email. And then if everybody, anybody wants, and text and everything because I just I don't ever want anyone to go through what Al goes through. I we he's like he's like family. He's one of those people you meet and they like become family. And just to like know that he goes through this heartache every day. He doesn't have his son. So if I can save someone from that by talking and sharing my story, that's that's why we do it. And that's why you started writing for your own mind. And I don't even want to know what he's going through because like she she didn't care anything about like it's it's very cliche she's very bad childhood. Yeah, and it was toxic it was very like and more. You know, yeah. like you're you are her sister yeah. and it was I mean it was mentally abused. It was yeah. mental abuse. Yeah. And sometimes there'll be a set, a setback where it's basically you were taught that you didn't deserve to be loved mm -hmm. for 14 years of your life. So that's very hard by two of the three members of your core family to just every day be like, you're you're the person who can fluff your sister's hair. Yeah. You can, and to think, again, that's normal, that even now, you know, 20 years on, there'll be a setback in her mental journey and it'll be, I, 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 I'm doing really well, I don't need the medication anymore. Yeah, I so I'm doing well now. because of the medication or things that are just, you know, uh, the big one is the flip out before the walk. Yeah. And finding, oh, it's rainy, let's not do it. Like we do it, but sometimes it's a harder struggle. And it, I'll just look and think, it's just so sad that you don't, even now, like that this still comes back to you. So if anybody else has that thing where they always feel like they don't do their happy or their lesson, like if we could help them in any little way to make that thought, like, of course I deserve to be happy. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It's not some things you compromise on, like you, you know, you want a blue couch, your husband wants a red couch, things like that. But you don't compromise on things that are. I hate cats. I won't live with cats. You know <laughs> what I mean? There's a lot of things. I I was attacked by them. I'm allergic to them. I don't need to. I know that if I were to get married, I would never be able to have a cat. But I would be able to compromise on the size of a dog or the house. Things like that. But if something is so important that you need it to be happy, small or large, and you don't feel like you deserve it, that that's something you should compromise, you do. Yeah. You know, so if that's just a, you know. Yeah, you, you deserve to be happy and you can put yourself first and you can put your foot down. I, I don't really talk to my biological mother that often. And I have, like I was said at the beginning, I have a YouTube page where I share my stories and everything. And I've been very open on that page about, I made some videos about my relationship with my mother. And at first I was like, oh, I should hold that back because if it gets back to her and she'll be mad at me. But then I said to myself, no, this is my truth. I'm gonna speak my truth so it can help someone else. Mm -hmm. And she has, it, like, it really is true. My, my sister is like, the most important person to her. So she hasn't even like looked at my YouTube page. And maybe she'll look at this and she'll see this, but I can't help 
you know, how she's going to react. This is how I feel. That's not why you're doing it. And that's not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it to, like, badmouth her. I know that she has her own issues. And, you know, I know I understand. I've, I've taken care of kids before. I've been a nanny, a babysitter. So I understand your relationship with every child is different. But, you know, it was lacking. I was lacking that attention. And I always came second in everything. So... And that's her for her own reasons, and that's her mental health journey. And I can't control her; I can only control mine. So I'm, I distanced myself, and now I'm in a better place. We had a gathering. It was um, a New Year's Eve party with some friends and family, and uh, it was a small gathering. Everyone was te- we were said, "Well, we'll do the testing and everything." And the best compliment I got there was, "You look happy." And I said, I am happy. I really, because everyone was saying, well, what have you been doing? We haven't seen you in two years. And, and I said, well, really, I've been working on myself, you know? And I am a person that I like. I like me, and I'm happy. So. And it's like, it's the little things you don't realize. You know, it, it makes you happy, and it makes you comfortable, and it's not going to hurt other people, and it's not, you know, really socially unacceptable, like running around naked or something. <laughs> like... It's if if other people don't like it, who cares? You know, like and it was the tiniest thing today leaving when we were getting dressed, and I put on. Oh, sorry. No, makes sense. Then you're nervous. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I I was debating should I wear this sweater or should I wear um and jeans or should I wear another shirt and a skirt. And she said, well, I, I just want you to know that, like, I'm, I'm wearing a sweatshirt, and I like it, and I'm comfortable, and it makes me feel good, so, like, I don't want us to look vastly different, like, but okay. that's the thing. If I wanted to come in a ball gown, because that's how that's I feel, you want. Yeah. you know? Who cares? On my bad days, I like, or if I'm nervous, I like to put on mascara. It's like a superhero suit for me. I like makeup. You know, you may never wear another stitch of makeup again. I like, want, you know, oh, well, as a, as a girl or as a certain age or things like that, you're supposed to hit this societal standard. Your favorite color should be pink, you should have long hair, or don't, don't like superheroes because you're a girl. And, you know, I very much loved superheroes growing up, still do, and when there, when my father said that he was gonna, um, his sister, and my parents sat me down when I was a tiny little girl, five years old, and the, our schedule was gonna be a little different. Daddy was gonna be home a little bit more because mommy was gonna go to work. Because daddy, unfortunately, had got back at work and was unemployed for a while, so he was gonna be working part time. And my response to the fact that the income change was happening wasn't, do we have to move? Can we get, like, can we keep the dog? It was. Am I gonna have to sell my dresses? <laughs> so I'm very, I was very much a girly girl and liked X Men. It doesn't matter if it makes you happy and it's not gonna hurt anyone else. You know, do it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I for a long time didn't want to identify as non-binary because I was like, well, that's not a thing. You're either a boy or a girl. You're not non-binary. What is that? And then I found other. And I found some other people who felt the same way and everything. And then I realized, well, it is, you know, I have always, I liked to wear dresses and I liked to play sports. And I, I've kind of always been in the middle. So I, I'm a non-binary person, I, but I'm not, like, I don't care about pronouns or anything. And, I, and that's another reason why I want to go by Lore, because this is who I am. I'm Lore. I'm non-binary. I'm 35 years old. And this is me. And if anybody else has a problem with it, well, uh, too bad. That's your problem, not my problem. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it, it's not just like work. Because, yeah, you know, I like dresses and I like sports too. But at the same time, it's that identity of... I If someone, when I was little, I, well, even a teenager, if we went somewhere and someone thought that was like my brother, I would be like, oh my gosh, it's my big brother. But because you know there was a ponytail or something, it would be like, no, I don't care if somebody thinks I'm a boy. Whereas I would be like, do I do I be manly? Do I the I was very heavy. I lost a lot of weight due to a torn meniscus um, rehab and finding out I had celiac disease. 
and mental the mental health journey of not eating my feelings but I was very heavy and I would always say the only things I like about myself are my beautiful long blonde hair heavy really long and I have really nice boobs <laughs> and, and then I lost 80 pounds and I lost the boobs <laughs> get out of it and go play with my friends so and everyone and that's and I, I myself I was very judgmental of that when I would hear other people like I'm not binary my pronoun is they and I would be like oh come on that's not a real thing <clears throat> but you know it is a real thing and it, that's a part of my mental health journey too so coming to self-acceptance self-love and I know your big sister Exactly, I'm big. I'm still her big sister. No, I said it's okay that you were your big sister oh, yeah. who was very much into boys. Yeah, and she was always girly and everything. I think that was part of it too. <laughs> but you know, I this is who I am. This is me, and um, I like me. So you just really have to, and I, that's what I want for everyone that I talk to. Everyone that watches my YouTube videos, everyone that I talk to, I want you to like yourself, and because you're person you spend the most time with you're in your head other people don't know what you're thinking so and as you said earlier you can't work on an empty lap mm -hmm. like, exactly. you literally can't like you have to make sure that you're full before like you can do anything even for yourself exactly but it's like i feel like nowadays i guess from like the teenage years up until late 30s even it doesn't matter older mm -hmm. like society perceives this image or like this whole lifestyle that you have like People think that you have to live or like be mm -hmm. a certain way or look a certain way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Exactly. So I think that that has like a huge impact. And it's getting younger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Younger it's, and younger. it's like trickled down the ladder where it's making it worse. You know what I mean? So I just feel like everybody needs to accept themselves before. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Yeah. Because you're a little girl who's like Nanny. And well, she still is. She's very much like, but she's not my little girl anymore. And she knew the way when she was three. And now she's like, and she puts she puts pictures on Instagram and things. And when you see her, I'm like, she's a woman. She's got the makeup. She's got the clothes. And the only thing is, like, I do know that Grace is actually not doing that because society is telling her it is because when she was two years old, she would get caught trying to wear the heels, and she would cry when you wouldn't give her your lipstick. So she always wanted to be that girl. But I'm sure a lot of her friends are in. Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's a there's lot of nine year olds. I was, you know, I, I, I was a heavy child. It's not easy when you can't wear skinny jeans, you know, because all of your friends are. It's not easy when you are seven and Mark Thomas calls you back. <laughs> yeah, call him out. The full name. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm there's a lot of Mark Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, and I remember that. And then when we were like 15, we were friends and I never told him, but I always knew. I was like, this is the thing I got. I lost it. Why does it matter? You know? You have to take care of yourself and love yourself. And it is not easy being in your 30s and not being sure if you want kids. <laughs> yeah. When you, especially when you see everyone else, like all your friends, people you went to school with, having kids. And like, not everyone has to have their different ways to live. I I used to think that I didn't want kids, and now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I do want to have a child. I think maybe you thought maybe you didn't deserve them. Exactly. Or that you didn't want to screw them all. Yeah, so, you know, there's no right or wrong way to live. It's your life. Live it for yourself. So, and that's it. Well, thank you if anybody...